Hello everyone, Farstar Gamer here, and today I'd like to show you our new creation, the Daenerys Battle Cruiser. It's a battle cruiser built around the core of Fowl's, Fowl's creation, and it's capable of fire a torpedo, which would be able to nail down any kind of ship. We will show you a um, fire test with the, the, the torpedoes and also with other systems of the ship, for example the missile launchers and the turrets. But for now, let's start by taking a look of the interior of the ship. Okay, so lead me inside of the ship and uh, explain the interior part that you created. Very good. Uh, jet packs off as we enter, uh, as it's very tight quarters, very submarine-like. And you'll see that there's an LCD here to kind of guide you around the ship. And there's LCDs throughout the ship to provide some direction. Oh, uh, I see. see under here. Very cool. Going upstairs to the uh, flight deck, as I call it, it's an observation deck. It's uh, mostly aesthetic. It's meant to be blown off in combat, as people will tend to target something that's visible. But it's a nice little RP area with a uh, control seat uh, for backup, some LCD panels with displays and information, and a holographic uh, conference table and conference room for RP purposes. Yeah, more kind of a strategic uh, room. Have a seat there, and I'll turn on the uh, conference. Oh, very cool. Very cool indeed. Yeah, that will be uh, useful when you're planning to attack someone. Exactly. And uh, as you can see, that table is just a projection of a creation which had a, a rotor. Uh, and the rotor allowed the small block, large block mix, which is how there's a large projector projecting a small conference table here. Just a little illusion trick. Uh, you can't actually weld those blocks. Indeed. Going back downstairs, uh, we have the main combat bridge, which is the protected area. There's no view in here, but the main medical bay is here. There's cryos pods here, uh, and there's uh, obviously the main control seat. And uh, this is kind of the, the main heart of the ship and the place that you would control it from in combat. Yeah, this is where you, uh, where you come when you are attacked or you need to attack someone and you don't really want to get shot while you're in your seat. This is the most protected part of the ship, I can say. Uh, going downstairs, you can see it says to deck 2 auxiliary medical, and that is the sec next deck down. Uh, there's not much to see in the auxiliary medical bay, but that's actually also the auxiliary cockpit. Uh, so should your main cockpit be destroyed, uh, this is the very, very back of the ship. It's very well protected, and this is if this part is destroyed, then the ship is probably destroyed anyway. Uh, so this is a good place to spawn if you get killed, uh, or else fall back to if your seat gets destroyed, uh, and then continue to fight. Yeah, it's an emergency room, let's say that way. And you can see every room is individually pressurized and meant to take damage and maintain pressure, hopefully. Uh, so often you'll take combat damage and still find uh, pressurized sections of the ship. Going downstairs, we have the first deck, deck one, in the engineering bay. Entering the engineering bay, uh, from the doors at each end, uh, between these two points, the entire ship is here. Every single essential system on the ship is contained within the engineering bay, from the gyroscopes to the thrusters, hydrogen tanks, oxygen generators, assemblers, uh, the entire ship's functionality is contained within this core, uh, which means it's very well protected as it's in the heart of the ship. And this says this is thruster damage enabled. This is very safe. Uh, it's been survival tested with thruster damage enabled, and, and there'll be no no issues with this. Yeah, indeed. What they basically did is to wrap around the ship the metal for the exterior uh, part, and then uh, the internal part is the the nucleus you can see now, and is. Well, it was made with the idea in mind to be as more efficient as possible, whilst making a cool ship of, of the outside part, and would be and uh, which would make uh, it uh, more resilient. So this is the first generation of this kind of nucleus core, uh, or, or um, neutron core, as we called it. Uh, neutron because you know neutron stars are very dense, and this is obviously very dense. Uh, but we'll show you the newest generation, uh, the newest variations of the neutron core, which have uh, instead of two direction gravity drive, have six direction. Uh, WASD enabled gravity drive uh, using a script. Uh, so that's a big improvement and it's also just more dense, more efficient, more compact. Uh, all functional blocks on the new core with no uh, conveyor uh, to speak of. It's all just functional blocks. Okay, okay. so entering the torpedo bay, uh, this is the main weapon system on the ship uh, and kind of what the ship's main functionality was meant to be. Uh, this is an anti-capital ship torpedo made out of large blocks. Uh, this ship is only one grid. It's meant to be survival friendly, PvP friendly, multiplayer friendly. Which is partially why I use large blocks and also because the uh, the firepower inherent in this is very good. Uh, obviously, you're not very often shooting against a solid slab of heavy armor, but if you were to shoot this torpedo against a solid slab of heavy armor, uh, it would penetrate 16 layers. 
Uh, and the reason why it does so much damage is because it's a combination of blast blocks at the front, which tend to penetrate the outer hull of the ship. Uh, and then backing that is a welder, two cargo containers, and a connector. Uh, and the connector and the cargo containers are filled with stacks, uh, four stacks each of 10,000 iron ingots, uh, which are loaded and split into stacks by a script. Uh, and then the welder itself is filled with a stack of steel plate and metal grid, which do damage, but also allow the welder to self-repair the torpedo as it travels to the target and keep it alive and intact to hit. Um, as a result, this is usually a one-shot kill on anything 2,000 blocks or below in terms of large ships. Um, uh, 3,000 blocks perhaps as well. Uh, anything bigger, you know, you kind of multiply, you know, 5,000 blocks, which take usually two torpedoes and so on. Yeah, we'll do a fire test for uh, for that. Also, the torpedo is able to track down its target uh, with a distance of about uh, 25 kilometers. Yes, yeah, so it's uh, the maximum range can be set to whatever you like in the script, but the farther it is, the longer it takes to lock, and also it's pretty hard to lock something outside of render range, and render range is typically 15 to 20 kilometers. Exactly. So I've limited the torpedo to 25 kilometer range, uh, and uh, when you fire it, uh, it prints a new one, obviously, using the welders, uh, and resets itself. Okay, cool. Let's go to the to the bridge. All right, we are now ready to explain how all the system of the ship works. Before taking seat into the main cockpit, I would like to show you these panel, these LCD panels, which fall as uh, programmed to show a quick um, guide to the system of the ship of the first tab of the control panel. So you will be able to remind all the various buttons. By the way, in this guide, I'll show you the function of every single button in the action panel. So I'll take seat, press tab, then uh, four. Can you explain uh, how those uh, buttons work and what they do? Absolutely. Uh, so the first tab is primarily your torpedo controls and primary flight controls. Uh, so the button number one is to turn off the uh, WASD gravity drive script. Button two is to turn that on. Uh, that integrates your gravity drive with your thrusters. Uh, so you don't have to worry about it. It just happens whenever your thrusters fire or the inertial dampers are in use gravity drive will uh, supplement those. Uh, button three is your weapon, your primary weapon system, your rocket launchers, uh, when you're not using the torpedoes, uh, that's your primary system. Button four is the camera, and that's for targeting the torpedo systems. And button five through nine are different uh, forms of torpedo firing mode and different torpedoes. Uh, what I will say is that if you have a torpedo already loaded, uh, you'll have to remove that if you want to change the type of torpedo you want to fire in most instances. Uh, what we have here is button 5, which allows you to fire a LiDAR-guided space torpedo, which is what's loaded by default. Um, and that's the fire and forget one with 20 kilometer range uh, that can home in and hit uh, moving targets. Uh, button 6 is a wire-guided uh, torpedo, same torpedo, but wire-guided, uh, and you don't have to reprint to fire that one. Um, button 7 is to fire a uh, LiDAR-guided atmospheric torpedo, and that's the exact same as the other torpedo, just allows, you know, as atmospheric thrusters, so it can go into the atmosphere and hit atmospheric targets. Um, button eight is to fire a dummy torpedo, which has no scripts, just thrust override. Uh, and that's for if you're on a server that doesn't allow scripts mostly, uh, or if there's some other issue, you know, unforeseen issue that's preventing you from using a script. Um, and button nine is to fire uh, the GPS uh, guided uh, space missiles. Um, what you do with this is you enter a GPS coordinate into the text panel. Uh, directly to the front right of the seat. Uh, you enter that into the public text heading. Uh, just copy the GPS coordinate from your clipboard into that. And uh, when you fire that, the torpedo will seek those GPS coordinates. And that has approximately 150 kilometer range. Uh, and and uh, that'll fire with button nine. And then uh, from there, uh, there's other there's other tabs with other different functions for the ship. Yeah, I will explain this in a while. It's worth mentioning that we will uh, later in the video we will make a test with all those systems to show you how exactly they work. So let's uh, go ahead and uh, look take a look at the second tab. So okay. tab two is primarily like navigation and some other minor functions. Um, button one is again your rockets because it's always good to have those handy on any tab. Uh, button two is actually a timer to help you print. Uh, if there's nothing in the torpedo bay, uh, you can print a rocket pod that gives you six extra rocket launchers inside the torpedo bay. Uh, now, by default, the projector that builds this and the welders are off because of lag and when your ship's moving, you don't really want those things on. But if they get blown up, obviously, you just hit that button again and it'll print new ones for you. 
and that helps supplement the 12 uh, rocket launchers that are already on the ship, uh, giving you a total of 18. Uh, the next several buttons, as you see, are jump drives, and there's a few different jump drive buttons uh, to uh, give you some tactical flexibility in combat. Uh, one's a blind jump drive set to 16 kilometers so that you can quickly jump away and then turn around and torpedo someone. And others pr primarily set for traveling home automatically. And then the others can be different tactical bookmarks around the battlefield. Yeah, Moving so you will be able to quickly uh, respond to a threat by jumping away or jumping in. Exactly. Uh, button 7 just to turn on and off your turrets. Uh, button 8 to open and close the torpedo bay doors. And button nine is just a camera for targeting purposes for the dummy torpedoes. Okay, very cool. Let's go ahead. Third tab. The third tab is all manual flight controls. So this tab is primarily used on servers that do not allow scripts at all. Um, or else if your ship is damaged and some of the automatic script based functions like the gravity drive uh, script, you know, no longer work, you can switch to tab three for, for continuing combat. Um, Button one, turrets on and off. Again, the rocket launcher on button two. Opening and closing the torpedo bay doors on three. Just the blind jump drive there on four for quickly warping out and then turning around again. Um, you have uh, the printing of a rocket pod again on uh, five. You have the dummy torpedo fire on six. And again, that does not use scripts. Uh, very simple torpedo, which does similar damage to the others, but are just thrust override torpedoes. Uh, no gravity or scripts. Uh, seven is the the guiding camera for that. It's a different camera because it's lined up a little differently since you're trying to eyeball the shot yourself. Uh, and then the last two buttons there are manual controls for the gravity drive, so you can toggle it on and off, forward or reverse. So that if your script's not functioning or you're damaged or you don't have scripts, well, you can still have your gravity drive. Uh, tab four and five, I can go over extra quickly because they're very brief. All that's on there is the rocket launcher, the rocket pod print, and a whole bunch of cameras. And you may ask, why are there so many cameras? Well, there's all these cameras for the LiDAR guided missile system. And since we have them anyway, well, if some of them get blown off while you're fighting with the rockets, it's good to use uh, other ones in order to keep sighting those rockets in and keeping your aim on. So this gives you the ability to quickly switch between tab four, tab five, and lots and lots of different cameras there so that you always have a good sight on the target. Yeah, indeed. OK, that's cool. And uh, what about the LCD panels in front of the main cockpit? So these are all for the missile systems only. That's why they're primarily blank right now. Um, the leftmost one will tell you the status of any LiDAR guided missile. So whether it's locked on target or whether it's searching for target uh, tracing, that kind of thing. Um, the middle one will give you extended information for some of the GPS guided missiles when they're in flight. Um, and the rightmost one is for targeting only of GPS guided missiles. If you hit K on the rightmost one and you look down where it says title, um, if you paste a full GPS coordinate in there, just copy it from the clipboard, paste it there, uh, that's where the GPS guided missiles will fire, uh, either the atmospheric ones or the space ones, whichever one you have loaded. Okay, that's cool. We can now show you how the system works in a practical way by showing you some firing tests. We will do these by the guided torpedo, the LiDAR system and the planetary bombardment one. We are now ready to test the anti-capital ship torpedo for a Scandri volunteer to be in Totsos ship, the Velenosa frigate, uh, to be a target of the torpedo. I'll uh, press 5 to uh, activate the pointing cameras, the targeting cameras, then I'll press 6 to shoot the torpedo, and then I aim uh, slightly above the target to uh, make sure that the cameras lock the target. And if everything went OK, the torpedo should track the target. Let me see if I've uh, locked the target. Still seeking. So, OK, now the torpedo has locked the target. As you can see, Infall is now moving the ship, but the torpedo will still track the, the, the Venenosa. And if I can now switch to the view, Okay. I will now follow the Velenosa with the camera, so you will see better the impact.
it's not much visible, but you can see the torpedo approaching the target here. Okay, I'm now following the torpedo. As you may see, the, the torpedo had no problem at all tracking the target. Impact. The ship is completely destroyed. Almost cut in half, actually. Well, this is only one torpedo, but uh, the, torp the, the ship is already able to shoot another one. As you can see, if I come back here in the view of the ship and show you that the torpedo is already um, inside of the bay and you can shoot again to completely destroy any bit of the ship uh, that remains. We are now testing the wired the torpedo uh, missile. So this is uh, this will be useful in a scenario where you will hit uh, um, stationary object like a station and you want to eat uh, uh, something specific of that grid. So I'll now uh, again switch to my uh, targeting cameras. This is the object, a stationary object. And uh, let's say I'd want, I would like to eat uh, the part above the station. So I'll press 7 this time. The torpedo will uh, exit the launch bay. Okay, another projectile is already been made. Okay, this is the, the torpedo. As you might notice, when I move the mouse, the torpedo will move as well. I slightly need to aim above the target due to keen bug, but uh, you may see that it's kind of easy to aim properly the torpedo. You see, I can also change target uh, while the torpedo is midair. But let's stand still with our target. In real combat situations, I found this most useful when someone's at close range and coming right at me, so I can just kind of quick fire from the hip. Uh, or uh, again, stationary targets, obviously, where you want to be strategic about the parts that you're damaging and leave other parts intact for salvage. Target should hit in a, in a moment. Okay. Yeah, as you may notice, it's kind of easy to aim and kind of easy to hit the target. We are now testing the Space to Ground Strike Missile, Foul is ready to shoot. This is a station, uh, the first target, but we will aim another target on the planet and the torpedo will be able to uh, target it um, automatically. And this is the ship we are aiming to. Uh, ready when you are, Foul. Okay, torpedo is moving toward the target. Blocked. Okay, from this moment on the torpedo will automatically uh, follow the target till it hit the target. And We're right now hovering about 18 kilometers above the surface in the Daenerys, which is still in orbit uh, above the atmosphere. Okay, the torpedo is uh, approaching the ship. Oh yeah, it's definitely locked. Impact is imminent. Okay. Impact. Again, the ship is almost cut in a half. Severe damage here. I'd like to show you some of the files you can find on the on Phobos workshop and those are all the, the kind of uh, weapons that you can build inside of the torpedo bay of the Daenerys. You can see also that there are some ships that are not focused on fight but they are some utility ships. So you can have a welding ship, a 
grinding ship and a miner and also a ship capable of uh, uh, flying into the atmosphere. Also you can have some kind of beacon with an antenna and some basilar function just to use it as intelligence or uh, to signal your position or some valuable, valuable assets in the space. So the ship is quite versatile, can be used in uh, various, various battle scenarios and also can be used to, uh, for intelligence or for all kind of stuff that you may want to do in a battle uh, environment. Well, that's everything for now. Stay tuned for updates in the workshop file of the Daenerys and uh, as always, see you next time.